I'm not going to ask if there's any questions about the previous recording because I'm going to give you a chance. My advice today, maybe look that practice sheet over during lab while this stuff is fresh. The concept of integer division and mixed type math and modulus and some of it's just still fairly fresh in your mind. Get a chance to practice it a little bit before it goes away. All right, next thing we need to, we're, we're just about done with our calculations here, but there's one thing we haven't learned how to do, and that's do calculations with dates. According to my design here, I'm supposed to calculate the next bowling date, and that's equal to the bowling date plus three. I can pretty much guarantee the days isn't going to go, right? No, that doesn't, that's not. So plus three, are you happy with that? No. That's not legal in C-sharp. Some languages will let you get away with that because the three, what is that? Weeks, days, we can't add the word, the word days. So now what do we do? This is not legal. If you want to add days to a date, if you want to add days to a date, you use the date time class, and the date time class has built in, it has the ability to do things. We've already seen that. The int class has the ability to parse text. Right. The date class has the ability to add days and years and hours and months and minutes and seconds, probably even more than that. The one we need is add days. There is no subtract days, they're all add, so if you need to subtract, and this is a little less common, but it can happen, you, sub you put a negative number in here. So it adds a negative three, which is the same thing as subtracting three. So we need to translate this, we need to add days. And notice all the different milliseconds, months, seconds, ticks, years, what the heck's a tick? Central Wisconsin, so would tick, it'll add it to your, no. Jokes are all flat today. You guys are tired. I'm tired. Okay, add days. How many? 14. Yes? This time I got Nick. He's nodding. Yes? <laughs> no. What's wrong with that? No syntax error. If I run it, Calculate. Next bowling date? The ninth. The ninth. The ninth? What's up with that? Run that again. Why is it on the 25th? Let's go look over here. Somewhere along the way, either I changed it. Was that this class? Where I looked at it and said, did I change that? I must have. I don't remember. I probably should look in the recordings. It would be in there someplace. I'm going to reset this. I think if you reset it, it'll now just use the current date. I don't trust it. Later on, we're going to fix that a little bit, but that will be in the future. So let's run that again. It looked like it was adding 14. 25 plus 14, that would be the ninth. Yep. Calculate. Now what do you got? The 16th. That's better. 14 days from the second. The 16th. It works. What do you mean it's wrong? It works. That makes it right. What's wrong with that? Pardon me? Should I call it the add? What's wrong with that? Anybody? You don't see any candy, so you're not motivated. Ah, there we go. Thank you. I owe you one. Should I make that a constant? Named constant? Could it change? If it can change, you make it a named constant. Every time you type a literal number like that in your program, you should stop and think, could that number change? If it can, 
And there's nothing magical about bowling every two weeks, right? If the number can change, make a named constant. So up here, where I put all my named constants, remember these are called fields by the author. I call them class level variables most of the time. I put them all, all my constants up here so they're easy to find. Private, const, what type? Int, because it's a whole number of days. Uh, the name is fun. Days between bowling. Best I got. Number of days from one bowling night to the next, 14. And then I use that, I'm going to copy it because that's a lot of typing. Use that in my formula instead of the 14. I've also seen programs where you make the constant and then don't use it. Good, you made the constant, you still lose a half point for not using it, but at least that's an easy fix. Come down here, find my 14, and paste. So that's the translation of that. 14 days to bowling, that has to be translated. In every language, they do it a little bit different. So here, it's add days, 14. And 14 is a constant because it could change. Should I define constants in my pseudocode? I don't recommend it. You can't. I've seen it. It's okay. But after you've been through my class for a while, you'll be a highly trained professional. Anytime you see a literal, you go, that's probably a constant. That's probably a constant. That's probably a constant. The programmer just does that. You can make it part of your design or not. Does it still work? I've made some changes. So it still works. Very common mistake. A date plus three doesn't work. You cannot just simply use a plus sign to add something to a date. You have to use one of the add methods to make that happen. If you try it in code, you get a syntax error. But if you do it on a test, looks good. Turn it in. I saw it in the notes. There it is, right there. Cool. Wait, it says error out there. Watch that. String processing. I haven't done much of this yet. We don't have a big need for it in this program, but you're doing string processing in your math designs, believe it or not. Strings, like numbers, can be processed in many ways, and it's a big thing. In intermediate programming logic, I have a whole unit just on string processing. It's pretty advanced. But it's very common to take a, take a big, huge, long string and break it up into parts. Here's a first name, middle initial, last name. Give me all the parts. Take it apart. Here's a date. Take it apart. There's other ways to do it, but you can do it with string processing. Here's some text that might have commas and dollar signs and percent signs and strip all that out. It's all text processing, string processing, and it's pretty complex. In this unit, in this, in this class, for the most part, all we're going to be doing is one kind of processing called concatenation. Another programming term, if it's used in English, I don't hear too many people using it. But concatenation simply means take a bunch of strings and stick them together to make a new string. My analogy here is always like plywood. Take a piece of wood, a little bit of glue, more plywood, a little more glue, more plywood, and make another big chunk of wood out of it. Here's an example. I have a string variable called my first name. Oh, spinny guy's making me nervous. Who do you belong to? Oh, well. My first name, and here's another one has my last name. In C Sharp, you use the plus sign to concatenate strings, stick them together. So what this says is take the letters that are in here and tack these on the end. So if the name was John Smith, you get this. Unfortunately, that's smooshed. That's my technical term. Okay. 
when you concatenate strings, there's no magic that says, oh, those are two words. I need to put spaces in between or commas or dashes or ain't nothing. You, Mr. and Ms. Programmer, need to take care of that. So here's how you do that. Here's my string. This is also a string, right? What kind of, what's the name of that string? No, it's not empty. It's just a space. If they were right next to each other, it would be the empty string, and they'd still be smushed because now I'm putting nothing between the two names. This one has a space in it. And so now I get John Space Smith. Another example, city, state, zip. We often stick those together on envelopes. Store them separately, but then stick them together with a comma and a space after the city and a space after the state. When we're done, we get Stevens Point, comma, space, WI, space, 54481. The tricky part's remembering that you got to put stuff in between. In your math program, you're supposed to generate an equation that takes a number and a plus sign and another number and an equal sign and another number and stick them together. This is how you do it. C sharp has the ability to not only stick together strings, but stick numbers to those strings. So here's an integer. Doesn't plus mean add? Not when there's a string involved. If there's any string anywhere, it becomes concatenation. So this, if your age is 56, this sticks a 56 at the end of, there's a space there of that space. If I put quotation marks around this, another very common mistake. It sticks an I and an N and a T and an A and a G at the end of that. That's not what I want. I want the contents of this variable. What's in here? If it's 56, this will say my age is 56. Another example, current date and time is. This one we can test. I'm going to do one of those no-no things. I'm going to create a string test, and I'm going to say that the current date and time is colon space and concatenate to that the date time dot, dot now whoa now yeah that exists too there's a today that gives you just a date now gives you both the date and the exact current time which about 20 minutes after three or yeah about 20 minutes after three and so now if i run my program again I made some changes. Notice this time it's not happy. Plus, there's a syntax error. I guess there's no parentheses on that one. Run it again. Calculate. And I can look inside here. It says the current time and date or date and time is 10 to 2014, 3.20.45 p.m. All of that automatically. This is not a string. No, it's not. But in C-sharp, all the types, ints, doubles, I think even decimals. Decimal doesn't play well with other people, but let's see. 13.25M. It's not a date and time, but what this is doing is creating a string. Whenever you stick a string to other stuff, the end result is always a string. So this number, this decimal number, is automatically converted into a string when you do this. For once, C-sharp is doing us a favor. Wouldn't it be a pain if I had turned this into a string first and then concatenate? We don't. That works fine. Integers, doubles, dates. I think we can even do Boolean. No complaints. Interesting that it's capitalized when it's output, but it's not in the, in the syntax. But other than that, it worked. So you can concatenate just about anything to a string. And it will make a string out of the two combined. And you can make, as we saw in the notes, a big, huge thing if you want to, with city and state and zip code <coughs> and what's the technical name of these? Literals. Those are string literals. Literally give me a comma and a space. Give me what's inside there. Literally give me another space. Give me what's inside there.
you can concatenate variables. <coughs> the next bowling date is, what was it, 1016, right? What if I don't want the time? Then we got to pretty it up. We're getting to that. Matter of fact, I don't know where we're going to get to it today. I think I'm going to leave that for next time. This is just the ugly version. We have the ability, you, the programmer, have the ability to pretty that up so that it looks the way you want it to. I don't care about the time. Or the time is constant. We bowl at 6 o'clock every week. There's a way to fix that. So we don't get the time. There's a way to fix it so we don't get six decimal places. We can do that. <clears throat> I'm trying to make an executive decision here. Okay, this is what we're going to do next time. I don't want to talk about this today. I can tell by the looks in your eyes that your brains are full. So I'll save that one for next time. When your brain's all rested, it's still full, but at least it's rested, and we can try to squeeze some more stuff in there. This part, relatively simple to understand. As your programs get bigger, or your variable names get longer, or your equations get more complex, your text is going to scroll off the screen. Well, this is just an example of what I mean. From a maintenance standpoint, that's kind of hard to read because now if I want to figure out what the code's doing, I'm doing this kind of thing, right? And if you've got the normal size font on your Mac with a full screen, full screen window, you'll be typing for a long time before you hit the edge of the screen. And then you give it to me, and in my office, I've got a 19-inch monitor. I'm half blind, so the font size is set to just something huge. And all I get to see is that much. C-sharp does not have anything that keeps track of how wide it is, how wide the screen is. I shoot for about 80 characters. Anything wider than that? Why 80? Because that's about all we used to be able to print. We don't do that anymore. If you're writing the code for yourself and you've always got a 27-inch monitor in front of you, then let her go. But if you need to deal with it for other people, you might want to split the lines. And you can do that. I can say, and this actually might be more readable, right? Take this and divide by that. Almost looks like an algebraic equation. Perfectly acceptable. You can split lines as many times as you want, pretty much wherever you want. That's breaking one of my rules that we're going to look at, but it's legal. C Sharp is not complaining, saying, I don't understand that. Notice I indent to show ownership. This belongs to that equation. So I indent, and I indent it a lot, so I can see that. You can split it anywhere except for a few places. You cannot split a string literal. So here's Volker Gall, there's its start, there it ends, and it splits. You cannot split this in the middle. That's the syntax here. Notice what happened to time and is. They became black and blue, and it's not part of the string anymore. Well, what if it's a big, huge, long string, and I want to split it? Then you turn it into two strings and concatenate them. Legal. This one's pretty short, so I wouldn't normally do it, but you can't. So you cannot split in the middle of a literal string. You cannot split in the middle of a variable name. You can almost imagine that. Can't do that. So not in the middle of a name, not in the middle of a string, just about anything else goes. Here's some suggestions. You can split either before or after a dot. So here's a dot. Do you split before or do you split after? Most programmers would split before because if you leave it after, that little guy gets lost. 
that gets lost. If you split it before, he's part of the next line. I think that, I hope that's what my notes say. No, mine has it reversed. I disagree with that. My notes, I think I've changed my mind. I'm going to have to fix that. I don't mark it wrong if you do it the other way. Right? As long as it's syntactically correct, do it. But I think it's better to split it this way so the dot doesn't get lost. That's easily lost in a lot of code. If there's an equal sign, split after it. If you're doing math, split after the operator. So I would split there. That's my suggestion. It works the other way. But particularly this one, if I split it here, oops. That just looks wrong to me, but that's me. Syntactically, it's correct. So splitting lines, just about anything will go, and you don't have to even worry about it too much, because if you do it wrong, you get a syntax error. Put it back together again, try to split it in a different location and see what happens. And if you have trouble because you want to split, you can't make it work. Ask me. So as your lines get long, split them for maintainability purposes. We'll just send them over to Trevor and we'll see how it looks on his laptop. Anybody in here got a Surface Pro 3? We'll send it to you. See what it looks like on any of anything. I haven't, I haven't looked. You should be able to run. I think you should be able to run Visual Studio on a Surface Pro 3 if you were crazy enough to want to run it on a 10-inch screen. I haven't tried it. All right, let's stop there. But you have to help me remember that we got to back up and do combined operators so that you know what they mean. Because your brains are full today. So you got an hour and a half of lab. You're welcome. I recommend you make good use of it, but I know your brains are full, so it's up to you. <laughs>